the Kentucky Department of Education, along with the state health department, have issued guidance for school districts to help stop the spread of the coronavirus. With the guidelines in mind, school districts are coming up with plans for the upcoming school year, and some counties, like Woodford County, are looking at giving parents a choice. Jacqueline Nye has details now. It's the LEX 18 Big Story today at noon. Right now, the Woodford County Schools has presented two options to the school board. One of them being parents can choose between online and in-person classes, and the other would be online only. Woodford County School Superintendent Scott Hawkins says relying on the possibility of there being no vaccine for the coronavirus, the county has been looking at the possibilities for this coming school year since the last school year ended. Woodford County did a survey and Hawkins says 57% of parents will choose to send their kids back to school and 75% say they want as much in person instruction as possible. That's how they came up with the model of giving parents a choice. Hawkins says they've made many changes like requiring masks if students are closer than six feet and doing temperature checks. We'll probably have to create one way traffic in, in hallways. Uh, have stairwells that this one is an up stairwell, this one is a down stair, uh, a stairwell uh, to avoid as much uh, students crossing one another as possible. Superintendent Hawkins says school was originally supposed to start on August 13th, but it got pushed back to August 26th. He says those extra two weeks are crucial in the county's planning. In Woodford County, Jacqueline Nye, LEX 18 News. And something that is cause for serious concern. That is the warning from Governor Andy Bashir about rising coronavirus cases in the state. As it stands, the bluegrass has had over 17,500 confirmed cases cases of COVID-19 since the pandemic began. More than 445,000 tests have been administered and under 5,000 people have made a recovery. The statewide death toll has been raised to 602 after nine more deaths were reported yesterday by the governor's office. And the bluegrass saw its largest jump in weeks for newly confirmed COVID-19 cases yesterday as 371 more Kentuckians fell ill with the virus. That is 55 more than the previous high in the past two weeks. Due to the most recent statistics, the New York Times is listing Kentucky as one of 40 states where COVID-19 cases are increasing per capita. Health experts continue to urge everyone to do their part, wear a mask, and practice physical distancing. The Fayette County Health Department has added an additional COVID-19 testing site. The department says of the 1,775 total cases in the city, 23% are among African Americans, 26% are in the Hispanic community. People can get free COVID-19 testing later this week at Shiloh Baptist Church on East 5th Street. At the times listed there on your screen, drive-ups and walk-ups will be accepted. No appointment is necessary. For more information, call the Lexington Fayette County Health Department's COVID-19 hotline. That number on your screen as well. It's 859-899-2222. Well, history is being made at Keeneland today with the first ever summer meet officially starting. The spring meet was canceled due to the coronavirus. There will be no fans during this five day event. Only jockeys, trainers, horse owners and staff members will be the only ones allowed on the grounds. There will be safety measures in place, which include health screenings and temperature checks. Everyone is asked to wear a mask. Bob Elliston, vice president of racing and sales, says Keeneland hopes the precautions they are taking now will help make sure fans can return to the track this fall. That's, I think that's why we're going about our business in a conservative fashion now, so we can build upon it and, and not have to take steps backwards, right? So if we, if we get further along and we understand uh, how this meet hopefully goes very successfully and we don't have any significant exposures to the virus, then we can add some more to that. Now, while you can't be physically at the track, you can still join the fun. Just click Keeneland at Home on Keeneland's website for information on how to watch from home. The summer meet will end on Sunday. Nationally, the U.S. has passed a 3 million mark for coronavirus cases. According to figures by NBC News, just over 3 million COVID-19 cases were confirmed late last night, with more than half of the nation seeing a surge in infections. Several states also saw a record number of hospitalizations. 
An updated model from the University of Washington predicts more than 208,000 Americans will die from the virus by November 1st, partly because of the surge in the number of cases in Florida, Arizona, Texas, and California. This week, the government issued new rules that may force many international students to leave the country. The new rules state students enrolled at institutions holding online-only classes next fall will be forced to leave the U.S. or choose another institution that offers both online and in-person classes. This new regulation is the latest in a series of pushes from the Trump administration to restrict legal immigration and visas during the COVID-19 pandemic. It also serves as a push for colleges and universities to hold in-person classes or risk losing students this fall. International students typically receive little or no financial aid, pouring millions of dollars into the higher education system that helps to subsidize American students. A group of Kentucky landlords are filing a lawsuit against Governor Andy Bashir in order to resume evictions. On May 8th, the governor issued an executive order which prevents landlords from evicting renters due to financial hardships brought on by the pandemic. Some landlords in northern Kentucky have joined together to file a lawsuit with the hope of getting this order lifted. The lawsuit would only apply to Boone, Kenton and Campbell counties. Kentucky is one of 15 states that paused evictions during the pandemic. The FDA is warning labs and health care providers that a common COVID-19 test is providing false positive results. The BD Max system COVID-19 diagnostic test is showing an error rate of 3% false positives. The nasal swab based test was given an emergency authorization from the FDA on April the 8th. The Food and Drug Administration is recommending patients confirm their results with an alternative authorized test. The company is working with the FDA to resolve the problem. Senator Mitch McConnell continues making stops around the state a short time ago, wrapping up a visit to Clark County. And there he was joined by White House drug czar Jim Carroll to announce Clark County will receive federal resources and funding to combat substance abuse as part of the Appalachia High Intensity Drug Trafficking Area Program. But talk quickly turned to the coronavirus pandemic. Senator McConnell addressed the Paycheck Protection Program, calling it a success and briefly touched on on what he expects the next stimulus relief package to focus on. He believes it will include liability protection for places like schools and hospitals, a focus on kids in schools and assistance directed towards those who make $40,000 or less a year. Most of all, he hammered home that the pandemic is not over, but the U.S. also cannot afford to shut down the economy again. So he said the most important thing people can do right now is wear a mask. But look, it's clear it's the right thing to do. It's time for us to take responsibility not only for our own health, but for the health of others. We don't know enough about this disease yet to be sure that we could not be a carrier, even if we're not testing positive. So I think the responsible thing to do is to put your mask on and to practice social distancing and help us get through this until we get a vaccine. Clark County is one of three Kentucky counties out of just 15 in the nation to be added to the Appalachia High Intensity Drug Trafficking Area Program this year. Senator McConnell now headed to Montgomery County to thank frontline health care workers for their work during the coronavirus pandemic. Keeneland is banning a Lexington horse owner from its premises after he allegedly used a racial slur on social media. Tom Van Meter fold and raise Triple Crown winner American Pharaoh. Screen grabs circulating on social media show Van Meter commenting on a post that reads, quote, repost if you are still boycotting the NFL, end quote, using a shortened version of the N word. Many organizations have publicly denounced Van Meter's alleged comments. Keeneland says Van Meter is now excluded from its premises, including participation by Van Meter and Van Meter Gentry sales in sales and racing activities while the track reviews the situation. 
The city of Louisville says it's seen an uptick in violence there in the last 40 days and the numbers are on track to break records. Well, Chris, according to Way 3 News, as of Tuesday, the city has seen a 40% increase in murders and a 107% increase in non-fatal shootings when compared to the same time last year. Way 3 reports after the coronavirus pandemic began in March, the city saw a spike in shootings of more than 100%. The station also reports a notable increase since unrest started following the shooting of Breonna Taylor. A Louisville council member says the city is working on efforts to help stop the spike. Louisville's most violent year on record was 2016 with 122 homicides. In a new court filing, Breonna Taylor's family says Louisville police had no cause for the raid the night Taylor was killed. The family says Louisville police called off a warrant search of Taylor's apartment after a drug suspect was located elsewhere, but then went ahead with the deadly raid to look for other suspects with no connection to Taylor. Attorney Ben Crump says officers invaded Taylor's home with no probable cause. Louisville police have declined to comment on the investigation, and an internal probe of the officer's action has been turned over to the state attorney general for review. Mary Kay Letourneau has died at the age of 58 after battling stage 4 cancer. Letourneau was a former Seattle area teacher who gained infamy after her 1997 conviction of raping a 12-year-old student. Letourneau would go on to marry the student, Vili Falau, in 2005. They had two children together. Letourneau gave birth to one of their daughters while in jail. In 2017, Falau filed for separation. And last year, their divorce was finalized. Tom's got to check the forecast straight ahead. And also later, having trouble with stubborn cellulite, there may now be an injection to get rid of it. We'll explain that coming up. And the happiest place on earth prepares to reopen. The changes guests will see to help keep COVID-19 at bay and everyone safe. Here's a look at lottery jackpots. Friday's Mega Millions jackpot, $83 million. And tonight's Powerball jackpot, $69 million. Well, here comes the heat and the humidity. We are in the thick of it for sure, but it can be beautiful as well, especially if you're sitting in the AC. I mean, look at those cumulus clouds reflected in the big blue building, the Lexington Financial Center downtown. Of course, Keeneland, it's a summer meet instead of the spring meet. Everything's a little topsy-turvy with the ongoing uh, coronavirus issue that we have. But uh, there was horses out earlier this morning getting a race, uh, at least a, an early morning workout. And we've got activity. This is the other thing that goes along you know, part and parcel of the summertime. Some showers, some thunder showers developing already. A couple of hours of data, you can see them blossoming across our southern counties. And we've had a few up north as well. And the LAX 18 storm tracker future track, at least in the short term, it's not showing much as far as latching onto these showers and thunder showers, but it is at least developing a hit or miss shower, thunder shower through the afternoon. So, yeah, unfortunately, we're still going to be dealing with it, and uh, it will be an issue for the next couple of days. Now, as you hop out, we've also got issues developing down toward the Carolina coast. If you've been following this at all, I've got sea level pressure and as well. Uh, cloud cover, you can see some storms off the coast there in that kind of just broad, elongated area of low pressure across the Carolinas. This has the potential over the next couple of days to have some maybe tropical, subtropical development, so they could be dealing with that. If it would become a named storm, it would become Fay. Uh, the best and the most likely chance for that to happen is once it goes offshore and gets out into open water. Roughly over the next 24 to 48 hours, we could see some development there. On the flip side, back toward the desert southwest, big heat ridge setting up, and this thing is going to continue to strengthen. So they've got what could be into the weekend and early next week, uh, a pretty substantial heat wave developing. So there's a lot going on, and here we are stuck in the middle uh, with this just continued heat, humidity, not record heat, but sustained heat. And uh, the heat index in the 90s, uh, the temperature topping out around 90, that daily afternoon shower storm chance where they fire up, dump rain, briefly could become strong to severe and then back off. And then here comes Friday. Look at this. There's a cold front diving in. A cool front would be a better way to put it because it never actually even gets in here. But look what happens Friday afternoon. Our better chance for more widespread showers and storms. So the potential is there uh, to have some active weather to start the weekend off compared to just this uh, little bit in the way we've seen. It's 88 degrees already. We've got 92 in Frankfurt. That's just the air temperature. When you throw the mugginess in, dew points at 70 in Lexington, it feels like it's already almost triple digits for the heat index in Frankfurt. So it is a steamy setup out there. Our temperature is going to hold steady around that 90 degree mark the next couple of days. The showers and storms hit Friday and the temperature does briefly dip 
heading into the weekend, but we bumped down to around our average high. 90 today, 90 today, hot, muggy, watch for those scattered showers, thunder showers. We've been dealing with it each afternoon since the weekend, and today's no different. Tomorrow, after dropping to the low 70s tonight, we're back to around the low 90s with scattered showers and storms into the afternoon. More widespread shower and storm coverage Friday, and then pretty consistently in the mid 80s the rest of the eight day. We're going to have a really hard time shaking that daily low end, but daily shower and storm chance. Tom, thank you. The FDA has approved the first treatment for cellulite, and pilots were once in short supply. Now they're losing their jobs. Jane King joins us now with today's business report. Retailer Brooks Brothers has officially filed for bankruptcy, squeezed by the coronavirus pandemic and a years-long shift to casual office attire. It had already decided to close about 50 stores, a decision it attributes to the pandemic. Now, for years, flight schools, airlines, and experts encouraged people to become pilots. They promised young recruit, uh, recruits a job that was lucrative and secure because thousands of pilots would be retiring in the next few years. But airlines are expected now to make deep cuts in the coming months, and the young pilots Pilots are the most at risk of losing their jobs. Air travel is down about 75% from where it was this time last year. Well, mortgage applications to purchase a home rose 5% for the week and were 33% higher than a year ago. Home price gains continue to accelerate as well. Mortgage rates recently hit a record low, just above 3%. And the FDA just approved a new injectable treatment called QWO for severe to moderate cases of cellulite. It's been developed by Indo Aesthetics. It involves a series of injections administered every 21 days for three treatment visits. From New York, I'm Jane King with your business update. Take a look at noon stocks. Uh, Dow and S&P up slightly right now. Nice jump for the NASDAQ, though, up 82 points right now to 10,426. GE Appliances plans to expand production and add 260 new jobs at its manufacturing complex in Louisville. The company said in a statement Tuesday that a $62 million investment will expand production of washers, dryers, dishwashers, and refrigerators in the 750-acre manufacturing complex known as Appliance Park. The statement says consumers are staying home and using their appliances more, often uh, because of the coronavirus pandemic and a desire for sanitization cycles on washers and dishwashers is one factor driving increased demand. The expansion is expected to be completed by the first quarter of next year. Disney World in Florida doing its part to make sure guests feel safe as two of its theme parks prepare to reopen this weekend. The reopenings come with new safety measures. Guests over the age of three will be required to wear a face mask and have their temperature taken. People with temperatures of 100.4 degrees or higher will not be allowed inside. Physical distancing guidelines will also be enforced. The first two parks to open this Saturday are the Magic Kingdom and Animal Kingdom, and Epcot and Hollywood Studios will open on July 15th. It is arguably the fashion staple of the year, the mask, but putting looks aside, which one is best for warding off coronavirus? Some researchers put some to the test, and we're going to share their results coming up next. Public health officials have recommended the use of face coverings to decrease spread of COVID-19, but clearly not all masks are created equal. To demonstrate how different they are, researchers from the College of Engineering and Computer Science at Florida Atlantic University created a visual simulation. Dr. Frank McGeorge reports. These researchers were not trying to create the perfect model of droplet and aerosol spread through masks. They really set out to create a practical and visual demonstration of the performance of three different masks. A mask made of a folded handkerchief, a homemade mask made of two layers of cotton and fabric, and a simple dome mask. Have a look. Using a mannequin head and fog maker to create a visible aerosol highlighted by a green laser, the researchers created a simulated cough. A light cough without any face covering spreads the aerosol mist a short distance, but a simulated heavy cough without a face covering expelled aerosol three feet away within two seconds and six feet away by 11 seconds. They also showed the effect a light breeze had on the aerosol spread. While the breeze does disperse the aerosol, it moves the particles downwind. Now looking at the spread of the aerosol with a folded handkerchief or bandana to block it, you can see that it leaks a significant amount of aerosol through the mask face and at the top edge. 
using a homemade stitched fabric mask with a simulated cough found a much better reduction in the amount of aerosol spread into the air. The spray doesn't go much beyond three inches from the mannequin face, but there is still leakage at the top of the mask. Now, finally, the researchers used an off-the-shelf cone-type mask. It's important to point out that although it has the same shape as some N95 respirators, this is not an N95 respirator. Now, interestingly, the amount of aerosol that penetrates the front of the mask travels farther than the aerosol from the hand-sewn mask. And again, there is leakage from the top of the mask. That was Dr. McGeorge reporting. As we all likely know, wearing masks while eating or drinking is <laughs> kind of tricky. We usually have to take them just all the way off to do so, but not anymore. That's where Shut Your Mouth comes in. The Texas-based company has created a face mask with a zipper over your mouth. That makes it easier to just unzip and take a gulp of water or a bite of food. The zippered face mask is going to set you back about $34.99 and come in a variety of fabrics and colors. Shut your mouth. <laughs> Stay with us. We have more news coming up after the break. Keep up with LEX 18 News on the go. Download our LEX 18 News app. It's free. LEX 18 News at 1230 is next. Count on LEX 18 News. The U.S. sets a single day record for new coronavirus cases as Kentucky reports a spike in numbers. Plus, the FDA is warning labs and healthcare providers a common COVID-19 diagnostic test is providing a low percentage of false positives. And the CDC recently released guidance on how people can be safe while voting during the upcoming election. LAX 18 News at 1230 starts right now. Very good afternoon, everybody. I'm Dia Davidson. The coronavirus crisis in the U.S. is getting worse. Cases have spiked again. More than 60,000 Americans were diagnosed with the virus Tuesday, a single day record. The total number of cases nationwide is nearing 3 million. Numerous states have reported record hospitalizations. CNN's Rosa Flores has more. A record breaking day in the United States, seeing over 60,000 new coronavirus cases Tuesday, according to Johns Hopkins University, the highest since the start of the pandemic. There's nothing to stop this train. There's nothing to stop this de steep acceleration uh, in the number of cases. This is a public health crisis. This is a public health disaster. Florida is one of the top five states reporting the most new infections on Tuesday. We have no doubt seen a major increase in cases. The median age of our new cases was in the 50s about a month and a half ago. Now that's dropped into the 30s. People who are healthy and under 40, you know, the death rate on this thing is, is very close to zero. Earlier, the nation's top infectious disease expert warned this. It's a false narrative to take comfort in, in a lower rate of death. There's so many other things that are very dangerous and bad about this virus. Don't get yourself into false complacency. Arizona is another hotspot. Hospitals there becoming increasingly overwhelmed and people also facing long lines for testing with delays in getting back results. We need medical professionals. We need testing kits. We need supplies immediately. Our hospitals are already in dire straits and they tell us that as in the next two weeks, it is going to get to a unbearable level of crisis. It's a similar story in California, with coronavirus hospitalizations at an all-time high and a slow turnaround time from diagnostic labs. Throughout Florida hospitals, 56 intensive care units have already hit capacity, and an additional 35 show a bed availability of 10 percent or less. Still, Governor Ron DeSantis will not reveal official state numbers on how many COVID-19 patients are within Florida hospitals. So all the data that goes into this is, is all available. Spreadsheet from that data, Governor, it is not available. And in Texas, hospitals in Houston could soon also reach their limits. The next two weeks will be, will be important, will be critical. So it's, it's not just about providing beds, but the staffing that goes right along with it. Texas has reported over 10,000 new cases Tuesday, its highest single day count so far. Governor Greg Abbott asking residents to follow the statewide mandatory mask requirement. The last thing that we want to do is to shut Texas back down. We will not have to shut it down if everyone will follow this very simple rule, and that is just get a mask like this, wear it. Rosa Flores reporting. Kentucky saw a big jump in coronavirus cases yesterday with 371 newly confirmed cases. The state averaged 104 fewer new cases per day over the holiday weekend. 
Yesterday's numbers raised the statewide total to 17,519. The governor's office also reported nine new deaths, and after eight deaths over the 4th of July weekend, 602 Kentuckians in all have died from coronavirus complications since the pandemic began. Now, taking a closer look at the numbers reveals a coronavirus mortality rate of 3.4 percent, meaning roughly 96.6 percent of Kentuckians battling the virus have survived. To date, 4,785 patients have fully recovered. Recent studies suggest a person's blood type may affect their risk of contracting COVID-19 or developing a serious case of the virus. Overall, the findings suggest those with type O blood seem to be more protected, while those with type A blood are more vulnerable. Doctors warn people who have type O blood should not slack off on preventative measures as they can still catch the coronavirus. They say the findings are more relevant to researchers trying to understand the virus than as a bit of hopeful news for the public. The FDA is warning labs and healthcare providers that a common COVID-19 test is providing false positive results. The BD Max system COVID-19 diagnostic test from Becton Dixon is showing an error rate of 3% false positives. The nasal swab based test was given an emergency authorization from the FDA on April 8th. The Food and Drug Administration is recommending patients confirm their results with an alternative authorized test. The company is working with the FDA to resolve this problem. A new study is showing the possible impact COVID-19 is having on the brain. British researchers looked at 43 patients with COVID-19 who were diagnosed with a neurological complication. That includes delirium, brain inflammation, strokes, or nerve damage. Most of those with brain inflammation were also diagnosed with rare and sometimes fatal condition called acute disseminated encephalomyelitis, or ADEM. Some of the patients did not experience severe respiratory symptoms and the neurological disorders were the first and main symptoms of COVID-19. Experts say the virus was not detected in the brain fluid of any of the patients, which suggests the virus did not directly attack the brain. An emotional announcement from Lexington Council member Angela Evans. She announced today she's resigning from her sixth district council seat to pursue her master's in public policy at prestigious Princeton University. Evans has served as a council person since 2015, saying that she ran for office because she wanted to make change, and that's why she has decided to continue her career. It is the big society issues that I have longed to work on. Issues that have been brought to the forefront because of the COVID pandemic. The deficiencies and disparities, uh, racial disparities, disparities in our um, healthcare system, the importance of dispelling mental illness stigmas, and the racial and economic inequities that are embedded in our ju judicial system. All of them require changes to our public policy. Evan served as Assistant Attorney General for Kentucky for six years. She also served as General Counsel to the Kentucky Secretary of State. Her resignation is effective July 31st, and she will officially withdraw her candidacy for 6th District Counsel. A group is suing Governor Andy Beshear, Secretary of State Michael Adams, and more state officials, hoping to force them to offer extended mail-in balloting in the November election. The state delayed May's primary, then allowed mail-in ballots for the June vote in an effort to minimize voters' exposure to coronavirus. The Kentucky Equal Justice Center, Fair Election Center, and four plaintiffs who claim health conditions put them at risk of COVID-19 have all filed this lawsuit. They're demanding an extension of the absentee voting and a hold on the state's new voter ID law for the November election. People should have multiple voting options during upcoming elections in order to reduce the spread of COVID-19. Well, this is according to recent guidance from the CDC, which also recommends longer voting periods and alternative voting methods. The agency also urges both workers and voters use face coverings. The guidance also suggests the number of polling locations available for early voting, as well as on election day, should be increased. Finally, people are urged to cast their ballot at off-peak times and consider bringing their own black pins or touch screen pins for the machines. The agency also recommends polling locations consider scheduled voting times or staggered entry. A stinky situation in Graves County after a truck spills gallons of human sewage on the road. Yeah, highway workers were called in to clean up the truck spill on Highway 45 near Mayfield this morning. Sewage truck stopped suddenly and spilled three 100 gallons of human waste onto the roadway. Motorists were rerouted from the spill for several hours. Kentucky transportation officials were warning drivers passing through the area that they would be greeted by a quote, intense smell. 
no kidding, <laughs> earth movers were sent to the scene to scoop up the mess so that it could be hauled away. You know, we're starting to sound like a broken record over here on the news side. Tom Ackerman, you guys keep talking about hot, hot, hot. Yeah, and thank goodness they got out early to clean that mess up, right? You wouldn't want to be doing that <laughs> this afternoon imagine? in the heat. Oh, uh, because day. we've got it. It's hot, it's muggy, and hey, it's July, and we keep it rolling. You can see out there through our live uh, weather bug camera uh, that we've got clouds starting to puff up. These are cumulus clouds developing the heat of the day. The air bubbles up and you eventually have clouds forming. This is between about four to 5,000 feet out there. And there are some showers to go along with them. And it is 88 degrees in Lexington. The heat is on. And on top of that, yes, there is a, a hint of active weather. Our distillery district live weather by camera showing that you've got some showers just to the north of Lexington up across Scott County. Additional showers as you down south towards Jamestown in numerous showers and thunder showers out towards Indiana. So over the past couple of hours, they're starting to well up and these will be a feature in your forecast yet again this afternoon. We've had it every day since the weekend and it continues to be the case. The future tracks got the onset delayed a little bit. It's not latching on to this earlier development, but yeah, it's going to be hit or miss. And as we have seen, there'll be uh, the possibility of torrential rain and even a few stronger storms there, but it's already upper 80s to low 90s. The extra clouds and as well the showers around will help start to put the brakes on the temperature rise, but Heat index is pushing triple digits in spots and that hot and muggy air is still there as well as that daily storm chance. We're going to change things up a bit going into the weekend. We'll break it down in your storm tracker forecast. All right, Tom, thank you. President Donald Trump is sent to meet with his Mexican counterpart at the White House today. Trump and President Andrews Manuel Lopez Obrador are celebrating the North America free trade deal. This is the new one. The United States, Mexico, Canada agreement went into effect July 1st. This will be Obrador's first trip abroad since taking office more than a year and a half ago. An interesting study about security cameras. New research finds they have the potential to tip off burglars when you're not home. Researchers from London's Queen Mary University say they're not aware that any criminals have actually done it yet, but they say there is a chance someone could develop a program that does so and sell it online. When someone is home, their movement requires the cameras to upload more data, but the data uploads are comparatively smaller when no one is home. If a crook figured out a way to monitor the change without hacking the cameras, they might be able to tell that nobody is actually there. Researchers are trying to extend their work to figure out how to maintain camera performance while reducing privacy risks. Jude Law is getting ready to Captain the Jolly Roger. The actor is reportedly in talks to play Captain Hook in Disney's live action Peter Pan film. Variety is reporting the movie entitled Peter Pan and Wendy is set for a theatrical release instead of going straight to Disney Plus streaming. Disney made its original version of J.M. Barrie's novel in 1953. Law is also set to reprise his role as a young Dumbledore in the next installment of Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. Some good news for people looking to feed their hobbit habit. A new audiobook version of The Lord of the Rings Prelude is scheduled to be released in September. Andy Serkis will read J.R.R. Tolkien's words. Harper Collins, the publisher, released a two-minute sample of Serkis's narration. The entire audiobook is nearly eight hours long. Serkis was Gollum in the Lord of the Rings trilogy and served as second unit direction on the Hobbit film. Amtrak wants to entice travelers with a buy one, get one free promotion for its sleeper cars. And there are 20 named storms predicted for hurricane season, the most since 2005. All that and more straight ahead. Hot, muggy, July, they all go hand in hand, and that's what we've seen all week, and that's what we're seeing today. It's still pretty nice out of Keeneland. We've had some cumulus clouds starting to puff up over the past couple of hours, but unfortunately, along with it, as we zoom in, look at that, Georgetown, Midway. We've got some lightning, northern Woodford County, even northern Fayette County. Uh, just like yesterday, but even earlier onset, we've had some of these uh, isolated showers and thunder showers blossoming. So. There's some activity out there and they're not going to move all that much. There's no real steering current to get them moving, which means they can put down locally heavy rain. We've also got a cluster.